Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another demystifying post-production Motion Monday. My name's Ellie, I'm a trainer at Maxon, and I'm joined by many wonderful people. As you can see, we've got Dustin Valkama, Lionel VC Domini, and we've also got Chad Perkins. How's it going, guys? Hello. I wish I wish I had a cool name like uh like Lionel. He's you know, however you just said that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> He says it better than I do. <laughs> I butcher it because I am English. <laughs> <laughs> also, hey to everyone already in the questions area. So, hey to Hannah, to Burn, to Janet, Jay, Drake. It's it's good to see you guys. So, before before we get into what we're going to be doing, because as you know, it's a it's a brand new month, and that equals a brand new topic. I thought I'd talk about the other things that are happening this week this month uh, at Maxon. So in case you don't already know, you can head over to the maxon.net events page, which is this page here, and you can see all the things that we do as a whole Maxon collective. So we have our regular webinars that we run. So for example, every Monday, we run a demystifying post-production webinar. And then we also, every first and third Thursday of the month, Max runs his color grading show, Max on Color. And we also have every second and fourth Thursday of the month, our very own Ask the Trainer live with the whole Max on training team, where you can come, ask questions. And both of those are hosted on the Max on training team YouTube channel. But we also have a bunch of live events going on. So events in person and also live stream or virtual events. So next week, we have the very special ZBrush Summit starting where you can, you can check out ZBrushSummit.com and you can watch that live stream and it's going to be from the 13th of November to the 16th. And it's going to be an incredible experience with a bunch of incredible ZBrush artists showing you their workflows, tips, tricks, competitions, all of that amazing stuff from the industry leaders. But we also have, we have a little uh, something going on. So every month we run a 3D motion and design show on the main Maxon YouTube channel. So we feature some amazing artists and speakers. They do about an hour long presentation showing their workflows, tips, tricks, techniques. But we also have a little something happening at the start. So any uh, keen like eagle-eyed readers, we'll see this a little bit here that says the show kicks off at 8.30 PST with the Maxon team presenting explosive news announcements and product updates. And I wonder what that could be. Who knows? If you ever miss any of our sessions and want to check out um, like new tips or want to catch up on anything you've missed, head over to the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel, which is this page here. So you can see all the upcoming live streams that we have, as well as all of the playlists for the sessions that we've already covered. One final thing is, if you head over to the handout section inside of GoToWebinar, we have this little PDF here, which has a very special link to the Maxon Merch Store. And we like to give away free t-shirts as a thank you for you all being part of our live streams. All you have to do, type in the password, which for this month is MoGraph Mondays. A little bit of a giveaway as to what the topic we might be covering today. Um, as well as a bunch of links to the stuff I've just shown you and project file links for this whole month as well. So this month, as I said, new month, new topic, and MoGraph Mondays are back. I'm super excited about this because I love, MoGraph is probably one of my favorite things, not only to kind of like talk about or teach, but just to do inside of like cinema or After Effects or any kind of like software. It is so much fun to play with motion graphics tools and create really cool and fun animations. And that is the idea behind today. Isn't that right, Lionel? Segway. Yeah. Yes, it is. So today we're going to play with text and the new cloth system with the simulation. So it's going to be fun. Uh, cool. Let me show so, the I, screen, maybe. I... Yeah, let me throw it over to you. So don't forget, if anyone is new inside of GoToWebinar, there is a questions area, and you are welcome to ask any questions related to this topic, any other topics, and you have the whole gang here to help. We'll, we'll ask some live to Lionel. We'll try and do as many as we can in the background. Um, and yeah, if you ask anything about what's happening on Wednesday, 
You're not getting an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Great stuff. <laughs> All right, so everyone can see my screen? Yes. Cool. So let's go. I'm going to turn off my uh, my screen. Uh, I mean, my my webcam. Yes, I'm insane. And so, yeah, we're going to do. Um, it's not one single exercise like I do usually. It's going to be a um, small number of different stuff uh, and so on uh, to play with the new simulation system with text. So I have several files. Uh, some are very easy, very fast to do. Some uh, require what more work. None of them are really com complicated. So this one, for example, is uh, the balloon text. Uh, I guess I'll be the first one I'm going to do. It's all rendered in Redshift, a very, very fast rendering. Uh, that's interesting also how to, to see how to do um, that kind of balloon uh, transparency. Uh, we can see here the sunshine through our balloon. And uh, this is the one from the, from, from the, the webinar. Uh, the, the hero pick. Yeah. So this is this one is using Softbody, and this one um, I have just created today is how to create some kind of cushion uh, shaped uh, using um, the simulation system. So we have here the seams. Uh, that's interesting, and also we don't see it very well here, but we have some very nice fold. Uh, it already looks like some nice cushion you want to 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 lay um, with. So uh, let's go for our first stuff. Just before, so this is the, the one we're going to, to do. That's it. We have our um, no string of text. Actually, there is one <laughs> who let loose. That's weird. That would be easy to fix anyway. So you can see we have a, a text just um, flowing with the wind with some turbulence and stay put at the same time and we have this nice soft body effect and you can see it's live i mean it's a real time very very fast to to calculate so first let's see a few things about the new simulation system and how we can use it very easily now with um, all the new tools we have uh, in cinema 40. so i'm going to text here a text um, object. So this is the mo text, which is now uh, right here. It's been some somewhere. Now it's uh, it's there, and I'm going to change. Uh, let's call it soft again because there's a few letter only. Only I'm going to put it on the middle, and the font I'm going to use a uh, Roboto because I really like it, and because it's uh, without serif, um, and it's very it's very straight and round so it's nice uh fun to, to play with and here we're going to use the bold effect and one first trick um just before not related to simulation but very often i'm using uh, the very same text uh, every time so it, after some time, it gets boring to to find to create it again. Now we can use here our uh, asset brother, so something you might already know. I can just here create a new preset, but this preset is going to save every parameter we have here, and I would like only to save here the depth, the subdivision, text spline, and the font, also the alignment. So I'm going to take those five uh, item and right click and we can create here save selected as preset so it's going to save it in uh, the database and uh, no i had i don't have my own but database so i'm going to save it as a soft text roboto for example and let's put it in preset category that's fine huh? i'm going to save it and you can see it's a partial um, preset because there is a, the half moon icon. And here I can make it a default. Uh, so to make it a default, we can find it here. So this is this one. I'm going to click on the crown. So now, even if I create a new, uh, brand new uh, file, if, even if I close Cinema 40, if I'm going to create a new text, you can see it's going to remember those three uh, five parameter i've set so it's a very very handy so let's go back to this one 
And so if we want to use text on uh, use simulation with that, there's going to be a problem, uh, which is the, you can see uh, the polygon, it's all only n gone, and we have some very narrow polygon here, so it's very bad. And that's one first step we can do, which is now so easy. Uh, I really love it. It's using here the Z remesher, so the remesh. And let's go to polygon count. So we're going to use a budget of 2000 polygon. And here we are, we have something perfect. This is extremely powerful and handy. Uh, some years ago, it was really painfully difficult to do that kind of stuff. Now it's just a few click and it works with any font you, you, you like uh, almost. It's uh, really incredible. And now we're going to use our simulation tag, uh, the cloth. Okay, so it works without having to put it um, uh, to make it an editable object. Before you had to make that uh, polygon object, make it editable. It's not the case anymore. And that's very powerful because uh, we can change uh, anything uh, at any time. It's going to work. Everything is going to adapt. So now if I'm going to hit play, uh, there's going to, be, going to be a slight delay because uh, the simulation has to, to go on the GPU. And then it's going to fall down because we have some gravity, obviously. So let's create uh, a plane just to see what happens. Uh, if I increase the size and let's uh, put on the simulation tags, uh, let's use the collider. So just to make sure, uh, actually you have, uh, you can use the old uh, cloth system which was, which was called Clothild. Uh, if you go here on your uh, cloth tag uh, in basic, you're going to change legacy solver and then you're going to use uh, the old one. Okay, I'm not going to do that obviously because the new one is so much better on every aspect. So let's go back here. We have a plane now and my, yeah, my font is a slightly underneath let's put it like that so now if i'm going to hit play we have our closed text and it's going to crumble so that's nice already because you can see it's real time huh? very fast and very re realistic if we take a look um, at the result here uh, it's like uh, our text is was made of cloth so there's nothing to to keep it up to keep it straight and everything is going to crumble and make that kind of puddle of text so that's kind of interesting we can see here here we have some shading issue very easy to fix we're going to put here our uh, fong um, setting here i'm going to untick here the angle limit. So now uh, it's going to to fong, to smooth the shading everywhere. And if I relaunch again, uh, we have less of this issue. So here, still, what we can see here is just uh, the fact that we don't have enough polygons. It's more than enough for a simulation, but um, to 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 hide, uh, to smooth everything, obviously we're going to use our subdivision surface and now we have something really nice very realistic as you can see but that's not very useful i mean if you want to make that that works but uh, it's a bit a bit boring so let's see uh, the other option we have so I, i'd like to to make some kind of balloon ef balloon effect there is many ways to do it first i'm going to delete act actually deactivate my plane now, and i'm going to Control D to go in the uh, project settings. So this one here, project settings, Control D. And in simulation, we will see everything that um, that's interesting and important in our scene. And in scene here, I'm going to just kill the gravity by putting it to zero. Okay, so now that means there is no gravity affecting the scene. So our close is just going to stay put because, because there's nothing to influence to do whatever um, anything with with this so now if i'm going to my settings here and i go to the balloon and activate the balloon something's going to happen so not not much right now because we have a pressure of one meaning that now it's fi it's filled with air but still there's nothing happening so let's uh, 
create some overpressure by putting like two, for example. So now it means that uh, the gas inside is going to expand and it's going to um, well to inflate our uh, our font. And you can see it works very well. Again, it's very smooth. I'm going to increase here the scene length. And let's take a look. And it's moving because the expanding gas has created some motion. So our uh, object is going to move around a little bit. OK, by itself, uh, it creates already some nice animation. The problem here is that we don't really keep the, the shape of the S. The O is pretty nice. Uh, but the S and the F and the T are going to spread apart exactly like they would if there were some balloon. Okay, so there's several ways to fix that. Actually, you can like really the, that kind of, um, of a balloon effect because it's uh, realistic and already nice. But if you want to keep it more straight and you don't want it to float around and so on, we can already use the simplest way would be to use here the mix animation. So mix animation using the pins, for example, we're going to, to tell it that um, it's going to be 100% influenced by the original position of the points of the mesh, meaning that again, nothing is going to happen. Okay, so now if you're going to mix the animation, so lower this value, for example, let's go here. We're going to keep uh, the original position of the points uh, and then uh, use the balloon. Uh, it's going to mix them both, make some kind of average value. And we get some very nice balloon, very easy. See, it's very, very easy to obtain uh, this result. Uh, and we already have some nice folds here. This effect of um, pinching here. And it still look like a S, and our T is still more or less straight. We have this effect too, so it's very easy to change it like that. And if I keep it, you can see now it's stay put. It's not going to float around. So you can play with this already, just using uh, between the influence and uh, the pressure. So by lowering, we have more of our um, deformation here. And if you want, you want it to make it uh, more rigid, we're going to um, raise the influence here. And you see here, it's barely noticeable. So usually the good amount is some, somewhere like this. And what's even more fun and something we couldn't do before with um, the old uh, Cinema 40 is you can see we can use a, a map. So to tell it to keep the animation or not depending on a vertex map. And before you had to, again, make your text editable. And that's not the case anymore. If you take your remesh, I'm going to, so the, which is a generator, I'm going to go to the um, other tags and the vertex map. And it's going to, well, it should work, but it doesn't because uh, there is, I don't know exactly if it's a bug, but uh, it's a limitation. And actually, I don't remember. So, anyway, there is a fix for that. So, I'm going to delete it. And let's put the remesh inside a connect object. So, this is another trick. Actually, it's like in After Effects, you have any problem, you just pre comp. This is the same effect almost. If I put it in a connect, you're going to make it one mesh. So uh, let's deactivate here the weld because we don't want to weld any points. We just wanted to make it just one mesh. So now if I put my vertex map on top, you can see it works because it turns a red. So I can't paint on it. If I try, you can see it doesn't work, but you can use here any fields you want. So I can use a linear field and it's going to colorize everything depending on that, um, on that field. So now I have this vertex map and I can use it if I go back here on my text. So I need to put the close tag here back on at the same level of the connect. And here in the mix animation, so let's see without what's happening, everything is still working. 
But now if I put my vertex map on it, so it means that it's going to have 100%. Yellow is 100%, red is 0%. So we will have 100% of influence in the yellow part, and we have 0% influence in the red part. So let's see what's going to happen, and it's going to be multiplied by this. You can see we have uh, more of the balloon effect on this part than this one. So I can make it smaller like that. So it's going to be more influence overall. And it will be more obvious if I go this way. So on the left, it's going to stay put. And on the right, you can see it's a balloon. And of course, you can move it. So Put it put it like that. So let's make let's put it here. And if I put it here, and if you want to animate this, there is a bug which has been fixed. So, well, I'm just going to show you the workaround. If I create an animation here, and let's go to frame uh, 80, for example. And I go there. Well, let's see first what happens. Um, so this is outside, meaning that everything is um, affected. So I'm going to here in the field to make it negative, meaning that I'm going to invert everything. So if I play, you can see nothing is happening except uh, on that part. Well, that's weird also. Well, we'll see. So here I'm going to take my linear field. I have created a keyframe. Let's go to the frame 80. Let's go there. So now it's going to be um, the same everywhere. And this is definitely not what, what should be happening. So to make it work, uh, we're going to uh, our vertex map. And you're going to create some kind of animation somewhere. So you can use uh, a solid so this is very weird i know but it's just a fix uh, for this version of cinema 40 i'm going to create a solid um, on top of that actually i can even put it under i think and i'm going to make like one person value or zero zero one percent create i'm going to create a keyframe going to the end of the animation i'm going to change very slightly the result so it's not going to do anything to uh, the animation. This is, uh, I mean, going from uh, this value to the other one, it's not going to do anything, but it's going to force Cinema 4D to sample everything. So let's see how you can see it works. So it's a very weird work, work around, I know. And very soon you won't need to do, to do it, <laughs> but this is the way to use vertex map right now. And it, this has caused a lot of problem because um, many people have tried to do that, thought it was not possible or it was buggy, but I, it is buggy, but it's pretty easy to solve. You just have to, to use this trick. And hopefully it will be fixed very soon. All right, so that's an idea. Um, I guess, yeah, I'm going to just copy this in a new scene. And let's create our um, floating balloon. So we can do some rendering too. I'm going to delete the linear field because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to delete also the vertex uh, map because I don't need either. Let's go back here and let's not forget to delete this one and maybe decrease influence. And because this is a new scene, don't forget to kill the gravity off. So let's go back to 0%. And now if I hit play, we are back with our nice uh, balloon effect like this. Hey, Lena. Yes. Can I ask you a quick question really quick? <clears throat> oh, yes. Go ahead. Uh, so like, let's say that like I wanted to start my animation with the balloon already inflated. Like I didn't want the inflation to be part of the animation. Like, is mm -hmm. there a way to do that? Yeah, th there is 
two ways. Um, actually, they are the same almost. So if I just keep, what I would recommend is actually let it go to its state there and then you start everything else you want to, to use. But sometimes you don't want to do that and maybe you want to use it uh, as it is because it's not going to be in simulation or whatever. So the easiest way would be just at, at this frame, for example, I'm going to make it uh, to current state to object. So I'll do it ah. on the connect object. And it's going to create this one so I can kill everything else. There's still the tag here, but you don't need it anymore. So just delete. And if you go back here, we have our um, it, the way it should, it should be. Okay. Do we, so if, you, uh, if you wanted the soft bodies to stay soft bodies and still like move and stuff like that, then you would need to shift the rest of your animation and start it later. Then. Right. Yeah, that would be an idea. Actually, here I can still okay. use uh, the clothes, and if I don't uh, use the mix animation, and here in the balloon, I just well, I don't even need to do it because uh, there is no uh, nothing happening. There is no turbulence or or whatever happening. It's going to work, and now it's um, it's a cloth, so it's going to work. If I just hit play, you see, it's it's a cloth. So it's working and it doesn't move because I don't use the balloon and so on. And it's going to interact with everything else. Okay. Could you take the expansion time down to like zero or something too? Would that work? So like, so uh, like, the, like that's like the yeah, time yeah, to well, inflate, right? Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Uh, well, yes, but it's going to create something very strong. Uh, let's see if I go back here on my uh, animation here. And I'm going to deactivate the mix animation. So I'm back to my um, real text, huh? doing the stuff and so on. I'm going to hide this one, of course. So this is our, the original. Okay, so it's doing that. So if you just decrease uh, the balloon, uh, the expansion time, it's going to expand as much, but because it's going to expand faster, it's going to be much stronger overall. It's going to move. Uh, so let's see. You can see it's much more bouncy. Mm. If you don't want it to be bouncy, bouncy, actually, you can just increase the expansion time. So it's going to take time uh, and almost not move. Uh, well, still it does a bit like here. That's mm. why the mix animation is really the right way to 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 make it extend expand, but without. Um, changing everything here okay and if you put it to one frame it's going to i think it's going to explode uh, to do something very weird oh well see <laughs> the interpretation yes it's uh that, that's not it's still it holds pretty well you can tell it just doesn't like that though it's just not a fan of no. the one frame expansion time Yes, exactly. So yes, actually, there is another trick I wanted to show you before doing the, the balloon. Uh, yes, I still have time. So here in the surface, there is another way to create some kind of expansion. It's the target length. And this one, actually, um, the way it works, and you can see it if you go to the simulation. If you go to simulation here, you can draw draw the particles and stretch. Let's draw everything else. If I just advance one frame you can see there is all that so those are the particles uh, created for each point and you can see in blue the constraint those are the stretch uh, the bend con constraint and the white are the stretch constraint and they all work together okay so let's maybe disable this one now oh, it was the other way around okay this one so the tag Target length. Now, if I'm going to play with the target length, it's going to expand this um, target here. So everything is going to inflate, but not not like a balloon. It's going to do something very funny, uh, highly unpredictable, but still pretty fun. So if I go back here and use a target length, it's going to jump. So let's see. Yeah, and usually it's very strong, as you can see. So the trick here yeah. is just to to replicate here the expansion time uh, using 
simply some keyframe. So if we go to zero to 25 frames, I think that should be enough, maybe 30%. And that's interesting too, because it remains, uh, it keeps its shape, uh, but uh, you can see it moves uh, and creates some uh, nice animation. And because you can use some target with the target length here, you can use the map again, uh, there is some cool animation to do with that. But it's different from the oh. balloon, but, and you can use the balloon at the, set, at the same time. Uh. So if I go back to, 25 frames, everything's going to happen almost at the same time. Yeah, and you need to, actually it, it takes into account the, the overpressure is not enough because it was before it was expanded, expanded. So let's go to four maybe, I mean, to compensate. Yeah, I know it works. It's, it's pretty nice because they are going to bump into each other. Mm. And if you use the trick with the mix animation I showed, uh, you can create some nice animation. The only thing you can do is to make it appear. I mean, you, can, you cannot uh, play with the scale of the text. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because the particles are going to be all um, too close from each other. And then it's going to, well, it's not going to work. All right, so let's go back to our uh, animation. So maybe I'm going to copy that again, uh, that, that, will, that will make some file to, to share with uh, every, everyone at the end. Uh. So let's go back here. I'm going to delete my tag again. Don't forget to change simulation to zero in the gravity. Okay, now let's go on the connect object. We're going to use simulation tag. Let's use the cloth. And we're going to use the balloon. Let's go to two. And let's use the mix animation, decreasing here the influence. And I think it's enough. Maybe we can increase the pressure. So it's very nice because they're going to, to compress against each other. And at any point, because everything is so um, well uh, procedural, you can go to your remesh and increase the count of polygon. If you have more polygons, it's going to be slower, but you, you will have more folds and so on. The, the whole behavior will be different. See, that's weird. Yeah, this one goes too far. That, that's interesting, why not? So you have to that, to take that into into account. Uh, some, Sometimes the settings are going to do something very different. If you change a few things, yeah, now it works. And if we go back here, we have some nice folds here. All right, so let's go back to our um, initial. So it was overpressure by two and the remesh. Let's make it like two, maybe 3000. And maybe I can increase a bit the overpressure. 2.5, let's go back. All right, now. If I want to make it like a balloon, I would like to, um, to, to make it wiggle a bit. So here, it's very easy. You just need to use in your simulation some turbulence. And the turbulence is going to, well, to add some turbulence, obviously, everywhere. You just have to be careful that usually the strength of five is nearly not enough. You need to, to make it much stronger. And also almost in every case, you must change your scale. At zero, it's just too, too subtle. So let's make it a bit bigger like that. So that's going to influence more everything. And if we take a look here, our, our clothed expression, don't forget that we use the mix animation feature. So the turbulence is going to be downplayed by the mix animation. So let's try. And that's, uh, I, I was lucky. I was lucky because it moves exactly the way uh, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd, I'd like it to move huh? like that. Not too strong, not too subtle either. 
we can change here the um, if i change here the scale maybe we will see more yeah it's a bit more wiggly like that it's very organic can even even try to to play with the, the strength yeah at some point it's going to struggle against so, uh, that's interesting and depending on the scale also you will have some different effect So maybe let's make it like that. And I, I would like to have some kind of rope uh, hanging, uh, hanging there. So let's add some rope. On. So we will see uh, how the rope uh, feature will work. Um, I'm going to use an inside. And do you know if you take an inside and you ask it to be just two side, it's actually a line. Huh? And it's going to work. I mean, it's really two points. It's not like some flattened tri triangle. It's really a line. Okay, if I make it editable, we can check it. Only two points. So there's no trick here. Just to to remember that uh, it, it is uh, just a line. Okay, there is no line tool, but you have the inside. Just put it to two. Okay, so let's make it like that. And I would like to maybe reduce, make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to put it uh, there. And let's make it like that, for example. OK, now, with my inside, uh, we have some um, option here. Actually, I'm going to make it editable. We have two points. If I add here, I go to uh, no, linear. That, that's fine. Uh, actually, no. Let's make it cubic because it's going to bend, um, uh, not to be a linear interpolation between um, the, the points. And if I go to uniform, you're going to create eight interpolated points. Okay. Now, in the inside, if I use my simulation tag, I can use the, the rope. So, rope means now it's going to be a rope that's going to interact with everything. If I just hit play, Oh, yes, you need to go back to this um, object mode. You can see it's, uh, it, it, that's funny, you can see it interacts with everything when it goes, it goes there. So, of course, it's very wild because uh, we have our turbulence, which is very strong and so on. But you can see we have a mixed animation feature too. And also, I would like to uh, set some anchor. So, the anchor is here. So let's go back to the point. I'm going to take this point. Let's go back to the clothes tag. Let's set the anchor. So now it's, um, you can see it's purple, meaning that it's going to be fixed in space at this position. Let's go back to the model. And you can see it's running wild, but it's attached here. So now I would like to attach the other um, side here to our rope object. So let's go to the insider. I'm going to use here in the simulation tag, we're going to use the connector. So connector is going to connect uh, the rope with anything uh, that's inside the simulation system. So it's going to look with the search radius here and connect to the object. So if I create now the connection, we're going to create an object uh, with uh, this one. So let's go back. Let's hit, hit play. All right. So yes, I think small mistake here. I need to put it on the connect object. Let's create the connection. So I click on create. OK, still not. Maybe I have forgotten something. Uh, the other object, okay, that's clued. Maybe the search radius. Still not. Let's create. All right, I'm sorry about that. Let's go back to this one. Let's create again. All right, so sorry about that. That happens. 
I'm going to take a look at the, the original um, animation so we can see what's going on. Uh, we have here exactly the same setup uh, as I showed. We're, we're using here our uh, connector, okay? And we have a rope. So everything is just identical. I have here fixed the points. So why is not working in the other file? We have the search radius, other object. If I create and then go back here, it's fixed. Well, that's real. I guess I'll keep on this file. I just want to make a small, um, maybe if I put it here. Okay, that's definitely weird. Maybe it's some something, I, I'm, I'm not going to, to linger too much on that because um, that's very boring for everyone. Maybe it's the collision pass. Uh, let's also increase the iteration just to make sure. Oh yes, that's something, yeah. You can see it detach. Actually it works here and then it detach because uh, I think my turbulence is just too strong. So let's go back maybe to 75 centimeter. Yeah, and also that's because we're using the, um, yeah, that makes sense. Huh? That's because I'm using here the mix animation. So it's not moving because of the mix animation. And then it can't, it cannot say put here because the turbulence is going to move everything on the inside and so on. Uh, I hope that it makes clear um, because uh, you see, uh, well, it's it's a bit confusing. Actually, I think I'll I'll go back to my uh, this balloon here because everything is set up the right way, and we have our mix animation. And I guess just everything was not that strong because you see here I don't have the mix animation either. So now it works. It's just turbulence. It's too, oh yes, the turbulence is a. Uh, less strong, so it holds uh, much better. Okay, so let's move on because yeah, time is running out. I just want to show you how to create very quickly that, uh, that shader. So here, if I go back to Redshift, let's just increase. We have some, um, a nicer shot like that. Now, if I launch from Redshift, we can see we have everything. And I have not finished the shader, so that's a, that's a good a good thing because I can create, I can recreate it uh, more easily. So we have here our, uh, this is the redshift scan and sky and sun. Uh, and this is the sun I'm looking at. So first, uh, using here the redshift render view, I can use here the bloom, uh, and the flare to create some flare and the streak to create some streak here. You can see it's very nice and we have uh, everything working together. Maybe I'm going to increase the flare intensity so we can see it better. And here maybe increase on the streak, the streak intensity so we have more um, that star shape. And if you want to make the sun bigger, it's very easy, you go to the sky and you're going on the sun, so the sky and sun object, we're going to increase here the sun disk scale. So let's make it maybe two. And we have this very nice uh, sun like that. Okay, now about the shader. Let's recreate it from scratch, or maybe I just delete it and keep it like that. Let's create in the redshift material, standard material. I'm going to apply it to the connect object. And here we're going to take on the base color a nice color, like uh, the blue color I had before. I'm going to launch actually the render view. I can hide that, make it smaller. 
Okay, now we have that. I'm just going to change the transmission. So let's increase the weight to make it transparent. So now it looks like some water or something like that. And that makes sense because it's a closed surface. If I wanted to make a glass or a body of water, that, that would be the way I would do it. But if you want to create some very thin plastic uh, film, we can, we can go back, uh, go down, I hit the geometry and use a thin wall. Thin wall meaning that it's not going to use any eyewear. So it's not going to uh, bend the light uh, and create that refraction effect. So let's go to thin wall. And now it's going to look like a ghost. And that's actually what um, a balloon is. So now what I can do the easy way here is just to go back to the transmission and use some color to tint the, the color. We can use the very same we have here. So it's very strong. I'm going to make it lighter, lighter, meaning that it's going to be uh, more transparent. And now we can see if I go back here and put my sun, we can see it by transparency. And now on the reflection, because here our transmission, the roughness uh, is linked to this one on the one on the re on the um, reflection. If I go down, uh, it's going to be very uh, very thin reflection like that, and we can see through the um, the the subbody, our uh, our effect. If I go back here, we can see also the transparency. So what we could do now is just add uh, to the reflection maybe some color also. You can tint the reflection. So it's very fast to render, and it looks pretty pretty nice uh, here in the reflection. Or maybe I can use uh, just some other color, maybe some slight uh, purple like that and maybe work with the reflection, um, the transmission here, and make it maybe clearer or more, um, if I increase the value here, it's going to be even lighter like that. Then let's go back to our post effect and add some contrast. So I can just go to the color control here we can very well use some, some contrast like that, or maybe increase it this way. Our sun is too strong then, so I go back to my sky and I can decrease the sun sky intensity. Maybe something like that, and we have some nice balloon. Huh? And if you wanted to have uh, our uh, text here, um, uh, the string, the string here, if you want, you want to see the string, it's very easy. You just need to add uh, here a simulation um, render tag and the RS object. And now if I go back to the curve and I can use a hair strand, it's going to appear in my render. So obviously now we need to put some material on it and so on. So I'm going to maybe to create just a standard material uh, to make it very white, actually whiter. Like a string of text should be. Maybe let's reuse the... It's still very black. Even though it's, it should be wider. All right, so let's make it just smaller. And we have a string. Now, if I just go back here, let NQ just to disable the, um, the material in the viewport. And maybe here in the display, I'm going to use the quick shading so we can see what's going on. We have everything playing together very nice. 
Okay, so yeah, um, I have 10 minutes to show you the next trick. Maybe it's a bit, um, I think I still have time because it's a very, it's, it's pretty easy actually, but um, let's go. So it's to show you the, um, the cushion. So actually we have uh, the file here, the soft cushion. So this is a more complicated setup. So I won't do it, every, I won't do everything. Huh? But we can see here, we have some here, some uh, seams, actual seams on our text. We have a very nice fold and so on. Uh, something very, well, it looks really like a cushion. It's very, very close from the other uh, trick I have showed, but this one uh, takes a bit more work, but it's pretty easy to, to do. So uh, let's go. Just to show you the final result, if I use, if I, show the cushion and we have also here um, some color so uh, using vertex map, vertex map uh, the white uh, the cloth is whiter uh, where there are folds and so on which creates uh, some variations some very nice variation you you should see on on cloth like that okay so the core principle uh, is to use still the same, uh, let's create a new file, still using the same object here. I'm going to make it a big, bigger, let's go to 40, okay. Now I'm going to create two variation of that. One will be uh, using the volume uh, to create some kind of collider. So let's do it. I'm going to put that inside the volume object. So it creates some volumes. I'm going to decrease the voxel size. Let's go to two maybe. Okay, so we have this. And now I want to use here this field, which is the SDF delayed and erode, which is, which is going exactly to do what it tells. So it's going to delete by five centimeter. And we can go even higher, like eight centimeter, centimeter and it's going to inflate everything. And then if I use on top of that, the SDF smooth, it's going to smooth the result and create those very nice uh, text. By itself, it's a very interesting uh, technique to create some, um, some text like that. If I go back to my Mo text here, we have an option to show the 3D GUI, maybe to just slide a bit, just a few like that, the letter. Okay, just have to tick this one here. If it touch here, it's not a problem because we're not going to use it um, as a final render. This is just to create the simulation. So let's untick here. Now I'm going to use on top of that, the volume measure. So now it's a, it's a mesh. I'm going to duplicate our text. So we have our text inside. To see the text, I'm going to use on the volume measure, our render tax and the display. And the display here, let's use the lines so we can see it inside, okay? Now I'm sure you have guessed it. Now I'm going to use the balloon uh, simulation to inflate and to conform to the shape. So it's different from the mix animation uh, because it's really going to conform to that shape and we can use some other trick on top of that. So here, my text, I still need to make it, I'm going to hide it. Uh, to have some nice polygon on it. So let's use the remesh, polygon count, and B to see everything. And I'm going to increase the count maybe to 4,000. I'm going to kill the gravity again. Now. So let's go to the scene, gravity to zero. And now on the remesh, I'm going to connect, make everything in the connect object. It's safer. I'm going to uncheck here the world. And if I use now the simulation tag with the cloth and go to the balloon, I'm going to expand the balloon. So of course now our volume measure, which is hidden, uh, must be a collider. So I'm going to use a collider, simulation tag, collider. You have to be careful here so that the collider side is going to be the back of the polygons, of course because 
here our text is inside here it's a front mesh so the polygon on the top the polygon you're going to see we want to collide with the back polygons inside so let's go back to let's put it back and now it's going to work if i go there and the balloon it's maybe a bit too strong we will see i'm going to launch the simulation and you can see it's going to expand and yes that's going to happen if you go too far on the simulation so let's go back again to see the result i'm going to hide and it looks like the what we had with the other um, thing but you can see we conform more to the shape uh, than the one it's um well if you were to create some cushion using some text uh, that would look like that okay if you go too far at some point it's going to explode so you have several options here just lower the overpressure or you go to your simulation and here in the simulation you can increase the collision path if we go to 8.8, eight, uh, it's, going, it's going to be uh, not really slower, but uh, the, um, everything uh, should be working better. You can see we don't, oh yeah, it's back again. Uh, so if it do, still does that, you're going to increase here, maybe the um, smoothing iteration and maybe a bit the damping. So it's going to dampen everything. Let's see if it solves. If it doesn't, let's see if it holds. No, it still explodes. We have here the iteration option. Well, still, I don't think uh, this one is going to multiply everything uh, by two. So going from one to two, uh, it's like you were going to put 40 here, four here, 14, and so on. So it's going to be uh, really slower, but more accurate. Uh, still here yes it still explode because we just have uh, too much of pressure so if i go back to two i think and now it holds okay and now we have that huh? we have some very nice folds huh, with that we wouldn't have otherwise huh? so if i put on top of that our subdivision surface you can see we have even more uh, our shape is more confirmed to the original shape and we can create this kind of uh, of folds here and we can even see here we have some kind of constraint creating here what what's going to be some seams uh, that we can use uh. so now once we have that uh, i'm going to to wrap it up so when we have that, we're going to show what I showed uh, Chad earlier. Uh, you want to make it editable. So I'm going to take my connect object. We're going to make it uh, current state object. So we have a new one. I'm going to untick everything now because this is the only thing I want to use. I can just untick this one also. So we have this object. Also, I'm going to untick the angle limit so we can uh, we have um, all that and now if i wanted to add uh, uh, the seams uh, we have we have already um, we uh, have shown you earlier if we go back to here now it's editor mesh uh, i can find uh, here some outline so i'm just going to create this one and that will be enough so i'm going to create this outline let's uh, right click i want to make edge to spline i want to create a spline out of that so this is my spline and now to create the seams i'm going to create a, a capsule very small capsule something like that i'm going to decrease the number of segment to something very low that should be enough if I put it then with a cloner, the cloner will be on linear mode. Decrease the size so that it's going to be something like that. 
also again uh, on the capsule i'm going to untick the angle limit so now the cloner i can just increase the count and if i put everything inside a null object alt g and then use uh, as a child of this uh, the spline wrap modifier so here using the spline i have created so let's put it here so it goes bunker because we need to uh, restrict to the y axis because it's on the top so y axis and now you have your sims procedural sims meaning that i can very easily uh, decrease the size uh, on my on my capsule let's go back to my capsule i think and can decrease it something like that then the cloner and i need to have a, a shorter length like this then i can activate everything back and it's going to be on my object so here i guess we'll increase the count to have that and we have some very nice uh, uh, seams which are very easy to to replicate uh. now if i wanted to have it everywhere let's go back to our connect object use uh, our um, our loop tool here loop selection i'm going to ask it to stop at selection i can create one here let's create uh, one so one here again uh, one here and create the seams where I can make, where it makes sense. So that would be this one. And let's say it's enough. I would do the same here, but I won't do it. It takes too much time. Uh, maybe let's just create one here. Okay, now right-click again, edge to spline. So this is the new one. And if I just um, update here, now we have our uh, spline here and if we change the spline uh, so this is this one to um, natural no it's not this one sorry it's uh, the Oh yes, yeah. For this one, you have um, for this small um, bit here, you need to create another one. So you have several setup of the null and the spline wrapper, um, so that that not going to squeeze against each other. So if we take a look at the final file, which is this one, we have this result and everything works. One last thing I'm just going to show very, very quickly. I'm not going to do it here on the final object. I, I have created a vertex map using the curvature mode. So curvature mode is going to create some uh, weight for the convex and the concave area, uh, creating some influence. Then you can use as a mask to create some color variation. So for a cloth, typically uh, where it's folded, where it's flat uh, because of the tear and wear, you will have a different color. So it's going to do that uh, as we can see in the, in the final render. So let's maybe deactivate, well, let's go back here to a redshift render view. Just create one render. You can see we have the color variation we can see here are from the vertex map. We have a slight color variation. It's more cyan. Uh, it's darker on the front and so on. So everything is driven by uh, this uh, vertex map, uh, which has been created with the fields. That's also new. Um, it was only since R26 or maybe R25, I think. So it's very interesting to do it because before you had to do it with the redshift um, material and the curvature node, which was very difficult to use. This one is so much uh, nicer to use, so much uh, easier to guess and so on because you have a live feedback uh, 
and you can very easily uh, use um, the remapping for example here I have used a curve to have um, to, to just squeeze the value to have this effect all right I'm I'm way over uh, overdue here so I had it over I absolutely love especially those final two things. So with the seams, cause I've been playing a lot with uh, cloth and like balloon text because as everyone's just seen, it is so much fun and so much quicker yeah, than it was before, but I've not been doing the seams, nor have I done the curvature for like a more realistic texture. Um, and someone even asked earlier about creating a curvature map. So you read their mind, which was very cool. And this file I'm going to to give them, so uh, you will be able to, you'll be able to to see how it's done. On. So tomorrow. That's I agree. Those two tips were just so fantastic. I was just jaw dropping. I didn't just like the 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 genius of taking all of those steps and putting them together to create the seams and to create the different stuff with the cloth. Like it's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, I I really like the detail. I mean, you know, being like a material guy. Uh, I like the detail in the shader and just the way that that the simulated wrinkles actually work. Like those folds and wrinkles go right into it. A um, little bit of fall off and it just looks soft. And yeah, I could I could take some pillows that say soft. <laughs> it looks comfy, yeah. Cool, yeah. Um, just as a quick like thing to you, Lionel. There's so many lovely comments coming. I don't know if you can see it in the questions area. Just people saying great stuff, many thanks. Cool show. Kudos to you, Lionel. So inspiring. Thanks for the tricks and tips. Uh, yeah, can't wait to poke around the project file. Loads of really, really great comments. And I'm not surprised because I was I was watching this and I was actually like doing some of the stuff while you were talking. So I was like, oh my god, I didn't think of that. So I've been playing along uh, in the background. Thank you. Um, also, one quick thing to everyone who was trying to access the merch store, the discount code is currently not working. Sorry about that. It is being dealt with, but we weren't able to get it fixed during the session, but hopefully by the end of this week. So keep trying and yeah, on the next session, hopefully it will be back. And yeah, it's it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much, guys, for this. And to you, Lionel, and to everyone for your great questions and your lovely comments. It has been a pleasure. I, as I said at the beginning, I am super excited for this whole month. So I already can't wait uh, for next yeah. week. And I'm sure everyone and here is feeling the same. Next week is going to be very fun with a lot of After Effect, actually. Yeah, oh, well, cool. there we go. A little teaser for next week. Very different from this one. Cool. Well, enjoy the rest of your days and weeks, and we will all see you next Monday. Bye, well, hopefully everyone. Wednesday, too, for this yeah, super Wednesday. hot Wednesday. thing on Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> yes, don't forget to Wednesday. Wednesday. Something may or may not be happening. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. No spoilers. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>